I owned uh, retail stores and I had a POS system. If you don't have a POS system, this is the guy to talk to. If you don't know your numbers, your inventory, you're missing a uh, product, you're ordering, there's many, many automation things going on. This guy can help you over here. Welcome, Chris, please. Thank you, thank you. I got a mic. I'm good. Thank you. So uh, it's obvious that Ben, ben has, a, uh, has a system and he's tracking data, right? Um, he even talked about analyzing data within his, within his presentation. And that's a little bit uh, what I want to talk with, uh, with you guys about. Um, you know, you're, I'm Chris Bleese, Vice President of Sales and Partnerships with Service Central. And you guys, uh, this, as Bob, I'm a little new to this industry in terms of, of retail. I come from the depot industry where we're processing high volume. Um, but I did get a start. My start was in, uh, I worked for a dealer. Uh, I, re I managed the repair shop in the back. Um, we didn't track any data. We didn't know how many customers were coming in the door. We weren't paying attention to what type of repairs we were doing, what parts we were consuming. We just did it every day. Um, how many of you guys use uh, and track data today? How many of you um, are tracking more than just how much money am I making and how much money am I spending? All right, good. Um, you guys are using a system to do that? All right. And, and how many of, of you guys that had your hands up actually have more than one retail location? Okay, so a few. Awesome. Um, so when, when I looked at if, you know, I, when I started thinking about data and when I started, when I was asked to actually kind of talk to the team here, uh, the group, uh, uh, I, I started thinking about what, what's really in common. And you look and you talk, talk about Jeremy and his presentation and, and somebody asked, what, you know, how did you come up with an exit strategy? Um, Bob, talking about a sustainable business. Ben, um, even, even Nicole talking about training. That's all driven by data, right? If you don't understand what your business is doing, you're not gonna be able to, to grow a sustainable business. Grow that business so that you can want at some point exit and, and go where you want to go. Um, see if I can get the clicker to work here. Maybe not. Just, yeah. So when you, when, you think about, uh, when you think about data, some of the things that you're capturing today are, are customer information, right? You want to know where that customer is coming from, um, what geography they might be in, uh, what kind of product they're bringing in your store, um, what kind of complaint they might have, what kind of product they might be buying. They might be buying a certified uh, a CPO device. They might be buying um, accessories. You want to know what they're buying so that you can market to them, right? You want to understand when they're coming back in. You know who they are. You can talk to them, recognize them, building that relationship with your customers. Um, what, what information you're, you're capturing to be able to uh, direct market uh, when, when those customers um, are out in the field. Uh, what repairs you might have been performing for them. Um, you know, when you think about doing a repair, your technicians in the back, could be yourself, right? Um, what repairs are being performed? What parts are being consumed? Do, when you guys are capturing um, data, when you're looking at data, are you looking at um, what technicians are uh, performing the repairs? what kind of quality uh, of repairs they're doing? Yeah. yeah. Right, so you're, you're understanding and you're using that data and probably, I'm guessing you're using that data to drive training? Well, so one of the things that I do, um, I've just recently hired someone, he's younger, doesn't have a lot of experience repairing things. Um, I will go back through and make sure that he's doing things like putting seals in phones, putting um, liquid damage indicators back in phones. Uh, it's our trade-in season, so to speak, and we need to make sure that those things are being done so that people can get their trading credit. So you're, you're tracking the, the, the parts that they're consuming? What about the damage that they're, to the parts that, that are being... Yeah, that they're, so you know, if something comes in damage, uh, we want them to note it, but they may not always do it, which creates a problem that we're working on. <laughs> right, so um, you, you're tracking the repairs they're doing, but if a part's coming in damaged, uh, using, are you guys using that data, you know, in, in, in terms of um, being able to use that data for uh, quality of suppliers that you're using? So when the, when the original part comes in damage, you 
know, obviously we do no down pay. Uh, customer came in, device won't charge, we determine the charging for them back. If, if that's what you're asking. That's on the device. Uh, um, but are you managing, you know, so when, when I look at data, oh, um, quality, oh, quality control on parts, right? Oh, uh, Ex exactly. When I when I first got into the industry, we weren't tracking anything. We didn't use data, you know. And and you look at um, a, as I said, everybody that's that's talked up to this point, they're using data to grow their business. Um, it it doesn't matter what business you're in, whether you're repairing computers, um, mobile phones, uh, PS5s, right? PS4s, a Xboxes. You want to understand what's happening how many devices you're repairing, um, what kind of quality that you're producing, and um, what kind of quality your, your, your technicians are, are producing, the amount of revenue that you're generating off of those, right? Standard business expectations. When, um, when you're looking at uh, damaged parts and um, uh, being able to track that and track your cost, being able to walk that through um, through the process, uh, and and in terms of parts quality, um, you having that data and understanding what suppliers are returning those parts, or sorry, what suppliers are providing those parts and being able to return those, right? That's part of your cost. Being able to understand the parts that are coming in the door, where they're coming from, the quality that uh, those parts uh, are coming in at and being able to track those back, request RMAs. Are you guys using an RMA process? So I see a few. I see a lot of, see a lot of people that are really not shaking their heads. Um, so looking at um, and understanding your business, right? Data is obviously a big, big, big part of that. Uh, and it seems that there's a lot of people that aren't, you know, that are, that are using a portion of that, but not all of it, not really taking advantage and understanding what's happening from the time your business, your doors open in the morning to the time they close at night, right? Uh, a lot of you guys are here today. Uh, who's running your stores? How are you, are, how are you ch uh, checking and having visibility into what's going on, being able to ensure that when you walk away, your business is still running and still profitable, uh, customers are being taken care of, right? Your point of sale? Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and cameras. And cameras? That's a good point. So you use cameras a lot? Yeah. You use, you use a, in the front of the store and the back of the house? Inside of the stores, yeah. All right. So you're, uh, when you're monitoring your cameras, what, what are some of the things you're looking for? When stores open and about like we have some complaints with customers or with patients, so we can check. So, so you're checking, making sure the store's open, right? Yeah. Um, checking on customers, making sure they're being supported, yeah, right? Yeah, if we say about work to customer and customer says that we don't, didn't say about it, so some temptation we can look up. Are you, able to, are you able to listen and provide feedback? Hmm? Are you able to listen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Do you provide feedback to your technicians? Uh, we don't do it a lot, but sometimes. <laughs> yeah? So are you tracking that anywhere? Don't a lot, but I'm trying to, I hope to track more information. Got it. You know, um, so you look at a med, right? Uplook. Yeah. I'm sure you use a little bit of data throughout your business. All the time. Right? Without data, I, I can't run my business. Yeah? Yeah, I got to know my customer, um, where they are what they do, um, you know, the POS basically, you know, uh, I use different analytics than uh, the store, but a POS system will tell me what's most selling, when I'm gonna run out of product, uh, you know, uh, what's next, what's the hottest thing, what do I have RMA on so much so I don't order it again, or what's selling fast, where's my market, uh, profit margin? It's, I mean, POS is, is everything. I will get a POS system. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm taking over. Yeah, well, you're fine. I, I'm selling your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you are. You are. And I wasn't done. Yeah, Before go ahead. Before I sign my lease, I will have my POS system and my credit card processor and all these things are ready. Then I order the product, enter it in the system, and see what's selling and what's not selling. What happened now, people do it backward. They order the product, 
They don't know what's going on. They don't know what they have, what's selling, what's not selling. They have overstocks. They find, oh, we find a box with uh, 20 screens that have been sitting there forever. Someone is laughing at me. You know what I mean? These, these, these surprises should not happen. You know what I mean? Because if you know your stuff, like we have a system here. I don't care. My, my, I have a brother. He's a little crazy. He'll go, you go, you know, ever. Yeah. Go find that box somewhere there. <laughs> I don't care if you get it. You know it's there. So because our system is not there. If it's not there, then we got a problem. And then we're getting into another, uh, uh, I hope no theft, but you know, we, we never went through, but we know, we know everything. Where's everything? And that's the PR system. And I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Google Excel doesn't work very well, Google Docs now, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I know you, you know yeah, me, just, all these yeah. things. I know my employees, they're good people and everything, but I need to know my numbers. I'm sitting over here knowing what they're doing, right? right from my phone, I'm looking at my phone because I want to know what my company is doing. It's, am it's amazing how many, you know, we, at, at Service Central, we sell RepairQ. RepairQ is one of our products, right? Um, we also sell a couple other products. Service Manager is targeted for large depot return centers. And you mentioned Google, right? Google Sheets and Excel. We, we used to work with, um, uh, we use Repair Desk now, but we used to work with, of course, with Sorry. Google Docs. Right. As probably 99% of <laughs> people used to work. And just out of curiosity, who uses Google Sheets or Excel today? So a, a few, there's a few in here, right? Don't feel bad. It's we know than, it's better than nothing. It, it is better than nothing. Yeah. We, we what? It, where I was going is we we have we have customers that come to us today. These large operations, they're doing millions and millions of dollars, and and volumes, three to four to five thousand units a month, and they're trying to manage their business on Google, Google Sheets. How much inventory they're carrying, right? That they're not managing the aging of that inventory. They're not managing the, the parts that are being consumed on each one of those devices and really understanding their cost, right? And, and that's really what a system's gonna do for you, right? A system's gonna be able to bring in and capture all the data you need to be able to manage your business, whether that's customer data, whether that's uh, device data, um, whether that's tracking your technicians, um, the performance that they're, that they're doing, how many, how many repairs are they performing on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis? You know, how many sales they're, they're actually processing? You know, are they upselling every customer that comes in the door? Are they upselling an, ex an accessory and, and being able to drive that incremental revenue that you're looking for as part of owning a business, right? And then being able to track that data and reward those, those technicians or those salespeople that work within your, within your organization. I think we had somebody earlier that was talking about, um, you know, their employees are always late. How do they incent them? There's all kinds of different ways to incent your employees, right? It doesn't always have to be money, but you have to be able to track the data to be able to understand their performance, to be able to, to, be able to drive that, um, that motivation, right, and that incentive to get them there. So what, what else, um, you, you know, in terms of data, what, what are some of the other things that, uh, that you guys might be using data for? KPIs. Sorry? Track. Go ahead. I was going to say, not only do we track you know, everything through a POS, obviously, but we also track, <clears throat> I want to know through my stores, everything that comes in, we're a customer, what we didn't have, or what repair or service we don't do. And you know, start to do, do predictive data that way to see if that's something that we can leverage or do in the future. But just so we know kind of the customer base, why they're coming in, and what it is we aren't doing that. So are you doing that through back orders or are you doing that through uh, yeah, a different, uh, yeah, but are you, are you putting a back order in the system to be able to manage that or are you doing that a different way to track it? No, this, this is more just kind of just analytical looking at it on, okay. on that kind of thing. But, you know, we also use data for predicting which is our busiest days, which screens, you know, you can just, if you get a large sample size, obviously it really helps for staffing and those kind of things as well. Right, yeah, that's a very good point. You know, when you're looking, when you're looking at um, when are your customers are coming in the door? When, wh when do you need your staff? This time of the day. Right? Yeah, what, what time of day are they coming in? Um, are they coming in, you know, typically you know, right? Uh, they typically come between you know, noon and, and 1.30 on lunch break, and they'll come in anytime between 4 and 6 p.m., right? Um, but what about the weekends? Is it the same? And you're doing that off of, off of what you know. What about when you're not in your store? 
What about our our sister company? Uh, we sell uh, Verizon prepaid SIM cards, and we had a guy called and ordered a hundred, and two days later he ordered another hundred. I told the sales rep stop. Tell him. I mean, a week later he he called. So I told him, you have a hundred there. He said, oh, no, I don't. It was his partner or the other hundred. Now he's going to order another hundred. And they don't even know what the hell is going on. So we know what they have, and they don't even know what they have. That's pretty bad. You know what I mean? And that's when I said, you got to get a system, man. You got to figure out something. Uh, some, they take it as an insult. But they have to fix their system. If you don't know your numbers, I'm telling you again, you, it's, it's going to be a disaster. It's just about to happen one day. So it, 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 you're absolutely right, right? If you don't know your data, if you're not uh, if you're not understanding how much inventory you have on hand, how old that inventory is, having those you know box of ten parts miss, sitting back there in the warehouse, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know that that's all cost, right? And all of that cost goes down to your bottom line, right? So building a sustainable business and and growing and and creating that exit strategy is is all about managing your cost and understanding that through the data that you're capturing. And that's, that's what most, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, I got a question, because yeah. my, my biggest thing right now is trying to input the data. And I know everyone talks about time and things like that. How does someone make the time to go in and one, input the data properly, and then two, make sure that it's testable, meaning like if I load a part and get a scenario with a customer, how do I go through the whole flow? Like that's the problem we're running into is, just finding, that, just finding that time to load it and well, you, then be able to can I answer this question? get it. Yeah. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to see what your answer is. <laughs> just make the time. Just make the time. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> just make the time. He's, he's ever, yeah. Just make I, I, I'll get up there. I'll be there at 5 o'clock in the morning every day, three, four hours before I open and just get it done. So, just get it done. So as an example, I'll give you a prime example. Sure. Go we, got, we got a box about 20 phones in on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm helping four people. The, the phones come in, I got people there wanting to buy the phones. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have time to load them, so I kind of did a little makeshift load to get it in there and sell it. But what would you do in that scenario? Like, okay, you, you have your data. You know what that is? I ran so I don't pay. I met Nose. I met Nose. I own many stores. Right? My employees, when they tell me they don't have the time, I want to choke them. Yeah. You, you have to make the time. You, your, your biggest challenge. Your, your, yes, your, your IMEIs, they come, they email to you. Enter them before the stuff come in. Well, it's uh, over. Well, that's, problem solved. This vendor yeah. doesn't send IMEIs. Then they get another one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he knows one. I think he knows one. Seriously. I mean, you know, listen, technology now runs, it makes your life easy. These right. are tools. They're very easy to use. Like, uh, you, you don't understand what you're missing until you do it. That's true. You're, you're one phone, iPhone 12, like the one I'm using right now, it's $1,300, $1, man. That's for the whole year in software. The whole year. You lose one phone. You save one phone. You, you pay it off right there. Right. Done. You're, you're and you find the boxes that you don't know where. <laughs> your, biggest you know? your biggest challenge is setting up it's your you. system, right? Yeah. And, and it is Get you. Get up in the morning. Right? It's making, making the time. You've got to make the time. Once, you're, once your system's set up, Right? You're creating POs in your system. The product comes in, you scan your IMEIs into inventory, you sell them one right after another. Scan in inventory, put on a, put on a sales order. Receive it in, put it out, right? So it's, it's not that much time once you've yes. invested up front in, in building in that system out. We have a question here. Is that okay? Yeah. Just a quick question. I can be loud as anything. One problem I run into with devices is not trusting where we're getting them from because so many of them fail. It seems like we can load in the I and the I number, but I feel like I still need to thoroughly test it because on the higher end iPhones, they're using the crap screens because it's too expensive to use a solid refurb screen. Mm -hmm. And so we run into those touch response issues that shouldn't have ever been delivered to my shop in the first place. But again, we've got it and, and I, I, I get those I and the I numbers on the few phones that we buy, but it, time again, if I buy five, three of them are gonna come back in a week with issues. So, you, you seem to know what supplier you're getting those from, yes or no? Two suppliers, the same problems. Yeah, but, but now you know, that your PO, you have your PS system, right? Yes. Then you just block that guy. It's history. <laughs> exactly. Block from somewhere else. Exactly. I, I mean, that, that's, Seriously. I mean, it, it, that's the tools. It's helping it's, now. It is. It's a, problem. it's a problem you have, but you've got the tool to identify it, right? And that's what a lot of people don't have today. They don't have the tools to identify the problems that they have within their business. 
And that's where the data comes into play, right? Because if you have a supplier like that, why would you continue to purchase? Right? I have, I have data, 20 years old, 20 years. Uh, you give me a SIM card you bought from me 20 years ago, I'll tell you where it went. 20, I swear to God. Like, I, there's no way that I will not know where is my IMEI. The serial is, is very important. <laughs> Any POS system doesn't have the serial uh, uh, ability, just it's, it's we're, we're useless. Yeah. It's good for vegetables and tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, I'm, I'm a big bass fisherman. I don't know if anybody in here is, but I even use data on my boat, right? I'm using data, I'm checking waypoints, I'm making, identifying where I caught that fish, what I caught that fish with, what time of day, what the weather's like. I mean, it, it, it is the world today. It's the, it's the world we live in. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's the data that drives you in your personal life and in your business, right? You're managing your finances, you're managing what's going on in your personal life, and it's no different than what's going on in your business, right? You just have more responsibility. So the more data you have, the more information you're gathering, the better off you'll be in the end when it comes to managing that business and making the decisions you need to make so that you can continue to grow and, and bring in more revenue. Amazing. You use data for fishing too? I do use data for fishing. <laughs> Every day. He's a data man, why would he know? Hey. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I it's, took fifth place this weekend out of, uh, out of 20, 23 boats. But, but the thing is, it's, it's uh, give it a, a, so let me ask you a question. So you're here talking about, uh, you know, uh, the POSs. Do you have right. any special for the guys over here? This, this we do have a special. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, we, have, we, have an off, uh, we have an offer, if you sign up uh, this week, uh, you have a chance to win uh, one year's worth $1,500 value in repair queue. Uh, that's enough to pay for a store for a year on our middle plan. And um, we're also asking that if you're an existing repair queue uh, customer, to come by and take a quick survey. And uh, just for taking that survey, we're going to give you a $50 credit towards your, your next bill. We want to understand what's going on, what, what things um, you guys are looking for, features, capabilities. Um, and we want you to be successful. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, without a POS system, it doesn't matter what POS system. Without a POS system and without tracking that, it's going to make it more and more difficult for you to become successful. Yeah. Any questions? Any other questions? You always have a question. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did a lot of shopping for a POS before I committed to one, and we landed on Repair Desk, and I was hoping you could maybe talk to me about why Repair Cube might be a better fit, because I really hate Repair Desk. So please tell me <laughs> what, you know, what, because I looked at Repair Cube, I played with the demo, I wasn't super impressed, but maybe I just didn't know what I was doing. So can you talk about it a little bit? What, what makes you different? Why, why Repair Cube instead of Repair Desk or any of the other ones? You don't pay him. <laughs> <laughs> I like my data. So, so it is data. Um, we are... We are as far as I know, we're the only um, point of sale with an actual um, BI power analytics tool behind the scenes. Um, that, that tool, you, you can create whatever report you want. If you're capturing that data, that data is there for you to create a report. If you want to know what, what time that, how long it took that technician to process that device, um, as long as they're scanning it and moving it throughout the process, which you can configure your workflows to be able to support that. But as, if, if you want to understand that, you can. You can report on it. If you want to see what information or what, what repairs they did within that uh, day, week, month, or even over the last year, you can. And you have the ability to analyze all of that. Plus the, you know, the analytics tool and, and the dashboard that we have up front. So if you're a data guy, uh, you know, repair queue is for, for you. Uh, and, and, you know, Repair Desk offers a lot of that. I have, you know, the dashboard. I can see all those things. I can run those metrics and reports. You know, my problem is that some of the basic features just aren't great. And some of the, um, you know, some of the bugs are just odd. You know, you add a part to inventory and then it doesn't come out of your inventory. Weird stuff like that that makes it impossible for me to track things. You know what I mean? I, I can't, I, you know, I, I, I've never used Repair Desk. I can't speak to, to any of that. Um, but I know, what, I know what our capabilities are. Um, beyond that, um, if you are an Apple IRP, uh, we have an integration that can support that. 
moving moving you further away from having to deal with both GSX um, and your and your point of sale. So all all of those questions, I'm happy to answer. You guys come by the booth. Um, we're right when you come in. We're right there to your left. Um, we'll be right across from where they're doing all the other um, things later on today. Um, and uh, look forward to speaking with you. If you don't want to talk about uh, point of sales, I'm happy to speak bass fishing with you too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.